Hello, everyone. Welcome to Developing Palettes. I'm Aaron Loomis coming to you from the Drew Estate Studio. With me today is June Lou, Seth Geis, and from the Villager Scar Studios, John McTavish. How you guys doing? Viva la libertad. Good, man. It's uh, summer here, but apparently it's rainy season. So, you know, normally I whine about the uh, winter time and I can't smoke and it's rainy and I can't smoke. But, you know, you do what you can. You do what you can. Well, it's summertime down here. It's nice. Dude, it's gonna be it's gonna be like mid nineties by Friday and Saturday. Yeah. It's gonna be hot as shit. That's dude. That's a couple be a warm. couple weeks ago it was and Aaron and I and Aaron and I and, and uh, another guy were hanging out on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have when Mister's it, Mister setup? I don't know. We're gonna figure something out. Do you guys um? When do you guys go to Vegas? Second like, week of July. Like four weeks from now. Yeah. Four and a half weeks. You know it's gonna be 115 there. So oh, oh let's try we'll it. We'll be let's lucky it. if it's 115. Let's try it. Let's try it. Good though. luck, you guys. Yeah, man, but it's a try heat. Do you guys has, does what's not that? matter? June, I'll be on well, Aaron, I guess I'll be out in San Francisco at the end of July. Yeah, I send you, I yeah send we'll you see you dates. at the end of July. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, you tried to tell us the dates. Like we have the dates blocked off. We just need to know it. Like, Friday 29th. Let's figure it out. If you can. Right. We'll so that's, that's the date you're free. Or are you gonna yeah, do it a day on the weekend? I have to buy. I have a wedding one day, so okay. all right, we'll, we'll figure it out. out. We'll figure it out. This, this uh, review is right off the rails. So speaking of the Vegas, <laughs> we will be meeting the one of the gentlemen or all the gentlemen behind this cigar, which is the Espinosa Knuckle Sandwich Maduro Corona Gorda R. Uh, cigar is five five eighths by forty six. Comes out of the San Lantano factory in Nicaragua. Uh, wrapper is dark Sumatra. Where it's from, nobody knows. Uh, binder and filler both from Nicaragua. Uh, blended by Hector Alfonso. Price point is eleven dollars and ninety-five cents, and cigar released in February of two thousand and twenty-two. So, with all that out of the way, June, what was your overall experience like with this cigar? Um, unlike the Habano, I felt like <clears throat> the Maduro Sumatra kind of uh, <laughs> dark Sumatra. Well, it's dark, dark Sumatra. Sumatra. It's grown at nighttime. Dark. That's why, man, it's yeah. only grown at nighttime. <laughs> Moonshade. That's what they call dark so What's, what's the, what's the Moonshade, Arby, Moonshade, by the way? Moonlight. Why is it Corona Quarter R? This is the Arby. Uh, each Vitola has a letter. I think it goes to somebody, like somebody that uh, guy is, you know, someone wanted to pay tribute to or something like that. So, gotcha. Some special okay. meaning. I'm guessing it. that the people from Espinosa did not get a letter. I don't know who. who uh, got, I don't who see got an R no, in their name at Espinosa. I don't see maybe no they H. could. Maybe they could all just pick a random. Hector might be like, hey, R. <laughs> He's going to find one of them. That's you, yeah. man. <laughs> Um, so I, everything, I, I kind of feel like this cigar took the Habato and turned up all the notes and cranked it all the way up. So, uh, it basically became instead of like soft notes and like good, good amount of pepper that you could, you know, comfortably retrohale and, and, and get some, you know, increased spice on everything just turned really spicy, uh, very strong in terms of strength, uh, very mineral, like 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 tinny kind of a mineral thing going on. Um, it, it just it was like that from the get go, um, and it was not pleasant. Um, you're gonna for someone who like this, you're gonna have to like. <laughs> I was gonna say not have a palate. Uh, careful, because some but, be careful because someone on this panel liked it. So, oh, so I was I was looking at your score and I was reading it wrong for a second. I read it wrong and then I was like, why is he bashing it when he fucking gave it what he did? Oh, no. And I was just less like, oh, I I just thought it was too, it was too much. Like it it was too much at a point where it was too intense. It was overbearing. It was overwhelming. Like, and it completely fatigued your palate even after the first third of the cigar. Like it was, yeah, I really disliked it. All right, Seth, what are your next? Yeah, um, listen, it's the Dark Sumatra, this night-grown tobacco. Yeah. Moonshade. Um, moonshade. I, listen, the first third, I don't want to compare it to the Habana, but I know what June is saying in the fact that there's a, there's a contrast between the two. And the first third in this one, sorry, there's a fly, has a really strong like licorice, oak. I got molasses sweetness. There was like this Christmas spice. There was a lot there was a lot to it um medium full strength and body in the first third i thought it was a good first third and then as the cigar progressed it was just became more like cocoa and leather and baking spices and earth and there were some some mineral qualities and it just 
it, it kind of calmed itself down, but it just lost that oomph, which that love and really, feeling, the love and feeling that I had in the first third. <laughs> I had the love and feeling of the first third. Um, and the final third was pretty close to the, the second third, medium full. Um, very good construction and burn and well, burn and draw. John? Yeah, as soon as I looked this up, I was like, June and I are going to be in the opposite sides of this coin because this is exactly the kind of cigar that I love and exactly the kind of cigar that June does not. And for all the reasons that June said he hated it or all the reasons that I liked it because... I don't understand, uh, I don't understand you people. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean you people? Um, it, uh, Sumatra it, lovers. Sumatra Dave. lovers. Hey, yeah. you take it easy on Sumatra lovers. It, uh, it, you, I mean, you're not wrong on all the points you guys made. This is the, I mean, you have to enjoy really spicy cigars. Like this is, this is a no joke. Like it starts at medium full and moves up from there. So like, it's a blast, but when it calms down, there's a really nice creaminess to it. And like Seth was saying, there's some cocoa and, and some sort of nuanced baking spices. Uh, if you can, you know, find them, if your palate isn't completely jammed. Uh, second third was definitely more creamy cocoa forward. Um, so it did calm down. And I actually thought it still managed to find a really nice balance. And then kind of like the Habano, which is, I think, the natural comparison. The This is more baking spices and earth in the last third, which was okay. But there just wasn't enough going on there to keep me engaged. Um, so it was, you know, pleasant, but not amazing. The draw and burn, of course, were flawless, just like the Habano. Um, so uh, it's kind of a toss up between me, between the two. Anyways, we'll get in that after. Aaron, what was your experience? Yeah, for me, the cigar show with oak, dark earth, and bold black pepper. Uh, oak gained a toast note fairly quickly and some mustiness joined in. Uh, second, third saw the earth become dry and the black pepper mellowed. And then the final third, third saw some light wood bitterness join in. Um, for me, uh, I'm, I'm with John. Uh, doesn't matter which one I found them to be the same. So average flavor profile throughout for this one, as well as I had with the uh, Habano, um, you know, it was focused on musty toasted oak and dry earth, which uh, supporting black pepper, but um, you know, basic boring profile, same as the Habano. Um, but you know, if you like the core flavors, then it, you know, it might be something in, you enjoy. You just have to be up for strong cigars. So, um, you know, uh, if you don't, you know, if you can't handle a diner's dive in and drives or dives or dinings, whatever it is, if you can't handle eating at a place like that, you're not going to enjoy the Maduro. So, um, but I'm not going to come back to this cigar. Um, when they start making did it at La Zona, I'll try it again. Did you show a picture? I did. I did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, gain of the score, start at the top with John, 6.82. Seth gave it a 5.85. June gave it a 5.75. I gave it a 5.6. So, John, how that 6.82 match up for you? Matches up well. Um, I would absolutely buy these again, and I would smoke these again. I was very happy with this. So that, um, yeah, score matches up well. All right, Seth, five point eight five. I thought of I thought of John when I when I first smoked the cigar, actually. Um, and you know, there was a quality. The first third actually, um, I, I really liked the first third of it. If it carried that on throughout, I think John probably would have loved the cigar even more. Um, it, it reminded me of the 601 blue for yes. a short period, a period of time. hundred percent. Um, it just had a really, really nice richness. And I told that to Hector. He's like, it's not, it's not broadleaf. I was like, I thank you. I'm aware <laughs> of that. I'm just saying it reminded it's me. Not? Of it. Like I know it's grown into nighttime. It's, it was a really, it was a really, really awesome quality. Um, you know, so how much is a cigar again? 1195 more expensive you know, than Habano. You, you know, if you count me at the right time, I might, Pick it up just so I can enjoy that first third, depending on my mood. All right. With John, I would do it. With June, we'd probably smoke something really boring. <laughs> well, it's more expensive because it's hard to grill tobacco without sunlight. Yes, we would be smoking. Yeah, 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 you have to expensive. have this. Yeah. Um, well, it's the moonlight. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah there's a special yeah. filter. You have, to have an amplifi- you have to have an amplifier. Yeah, it amplifies it's, the moonlight. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a tough. big thing you have to set it's up tough. and there's panels and stuff. It's a lot of work. Yeah. All right, June five point seven five. Is a a no go for me. You know what, John? For how often you and I typically agree on a cigar, (laughs) for this type of cigar, we are completely opposite polar sides. Different. We do have this pretty. It's interesting. Yeah, that's how you. That's how. how, That's how you guys usually are. You're dead. No, we overlap on like eighty five percent. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then that that fifteen percent for this kind of profile. Yep. But when no. I go south, man, you guys really fucking go south. 
no. <laughs> uh, my 5.6 matches up well. I mean, uh, I, it was identical, almost performance to the Habano. Average favorite profile throughout. Uh, I just had a bit of a snug draw on this one. I had a perfect draw on the other one. So based on my scores, the Habano scored better, but I wouldn't pick one of these over the other. Um, if I had to smoke one of these, you could just pick whatever one you wanted and gave it to me. So I'd be fine. Uh, any other final thoughts from you guys on this? Uh, and, like walk by like the Espinos. They're like, hey, which one do you want? Just fucking give me. <laughs> give me. I'm going to be really curious um, because obviously, you know, the, the whole thing, you don't have a favorite child is, is total bullshit. You always have a favorite child. So I want to know, you know, when we go to PCA, uh, I mean, you know, the Habano is going to be Eric's favorite because Eric only loves Habano, apparently. Yeah. Uh, I'm guessing Hector is probably Sumatra Town because he's probably tired of doing Habano. Right. And I'm really interested to know what uh, what Mr. Fieri, which is, you know, say Mr. Fieri, and then he'll say, no, just call me Guy. And I'll be like, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really curious of the two. <laughs> can I touch your hair? No. Can I touch your hair? No, please, <laughs> please leave. Uh, I'm curious which of the two he's going to like more. And then he's, you know, he's, tr- he's probably going to try to be politically correct. And I'm going to say, fuck that shit. Tell me which one you like more. Tell me which one you like more. And I well, want to know think, which one you like think, more. Do you think, guy, I don't think Guy Fairy is going to be politically correct. I bet you he'll be like, I smoke the fucking Maduro all the time. Well, I think well, he's going to say Maduro. Out. The Maduro Toro. Is that what the size yeah. is? Or do they have Robusta? Uh, it's a Corona Gorda as well, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you mean Toro the, and the, the, Toro what, what he likes? Yeah. What he yeah. likes. What guy yeah. likes. Yeah. But anyways. Yeah. You can go back and all the, you know, all the events where they were taking pictures of him. You can see. I don't think they. I don't know if they were, any of them were ever lit, but he him, dude, I was, all the time. Oh, I was connect- looking. Sorry. I was looking no, him up because really? I was about to go stalk him. What are you going to say? So here. okay, so this might be totally nitpicking. I wasn't on board with the foot band ribbons from the perspective of the color choices. And I'll tell you the why. red, the red, on the, red, on the, red on the red, red on the dark and the black. And, uh, black he smokes, the, he the smokes the Maduro and it's a Toro in this picture. Yes. There you go. I fucking called it. <laughs> so I of actually course. wrote down in my notes when I was doing the Habano that it was the Maduro. And that's immediately where my head went to because black band means Maduro and red band means Habano. Now that's just where my head goes. And you know, I'm not a marketing guy by any stretch of the imagination, Wait, but like that's, black would be, black would be see, lost on that rap on that dark rap. It it absolutely would. It absolutely no, would. And that's probably why you John, wouldn't do it. John's right. Red red always goes with unless it goes know. with broadleaf. Yeah, it also goes with broadleaf, but usually you see red uh, red associated red with Habana. Habana rappers. Yeah. Okay. But you're right. If you put black ribbon on a black I rapper, think you should you bring it up to it. guy and have a debate with him. I mean <laughs> I want, to talk, done... I want to talk cooking. I want to talk about knife skills and cooking and, you know, being in the weeds and, you know, that kind of shit. Right. Industry talk. All right. All right. Wherever you're catching this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Check out the full written review on the website. Uh, follow us on the social media channels and you can catch all of our review, re- review recaps on podcasts, iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. Knuckle sandwich. <laughs>